will to recite Dukkha Ariya Sicca Bali first. Can you follow me? At the Minja Begawe Dukkha Ariya Sicca Jadibi Dukkha Jarabi Dukkha Maranam bi dokam Soga Paridewa Doka Domanasu Bayasa bi dokam Abiehi Sambiago bi dokam Biehi we be all go be doko Yam Bejana Labadi Dam be dokam Sanke de na Pinju Bada Nekanda doka We recite together. Kadamija begawe dokariya sicham Jadivi doka Jarabi doka Maranam bi doka Soga Maridewa doka Tomanasu bayasa bi doka Abiye isam yoga bi doko Iye hi we bi yoga bi doko Yam be jana lavati Dam bi doka Sanke de nam Iju badane kanda doka Translation, follow me. And what bhikkhus is the noble truth of suffering, birth is suffering, aging is suffering, death is suffering, sorrow, lamentation, pain, grief, and excessive despair are suffering. Association with the disliked is suffering. Separation from the liked is suffering. Not to get what one wishes, that also is suffering. <clears throat> In brief, the five aggregates of clinging are suffering. So Dukkha Ariya Sija Buddha realize these noble truths clearly and Araha also realize these truth noble truth of suffering. <clears throat> Today, we have to listen how Buddha had great compassion towards all beings. Karuna, Magruna of the Buddha. <coughs> so Buddha saw all beings are conveyed to unavoidable Aging, sickness, and death. Jara, Bhyadi, and Marana. We all are conveyed to unavoidable aging, sickness, and death. <clears throat> See, in this way, Great compassion with sympathy rose 
in the hearts of the Buddha. Upane di logo di pasandana Buddha na bagawandana sati sumagruna alkamadi. In every existence, all beings are carried away to reach aging from the time of their jati, from the time of their rebirth, and from aging to sickness, and then from, age, from sickness to death. Buddha perceived with his insight knowledge the nature of impermanence. And Buddha has great compassion, magruna, on all beings. <clears throat> of course, in so far as in so far as beings are concerned, if they reflect. They have some knowledge of the impermanent nature of their own Namarupa, Mainameda, or Khandas. <clears throat> However, they mistake think that they will have to live long. Obviously, they assume that no deterioration is taking place in their youthful appearance, in their health. While imagining in this way, unexpectedly, sickness may prevail on them under unfavorable circumstances. Some dying at an early age, wise, stay young. If death, death does not occur early, they gradually grow older and older, day by day, month by month, and year by year. Yet, accidentally, at first sight, they do not think of themselves as getting old with the passage of time. Only when their hair turned gray and their teeth decayed, etc., they would come to realize that they have become old. The question. Who are they, who are those carrying them away to unavoidable aging, sickness, and death? Who are you carrying me away to unavoidable aging, sickness, and death? So who carry us? to unavoidable aging, sickness, and death. It is Namarupa or Kanda. In our own material body, they are conveying us. From the time of our conception, new namarupas, new Mainameda are continuously forming or they are arising and dissolving and then appearing afresh to be again dissolved, undergoing a gradual process of continual change. A person slowly and perhaps un noticeably grows older in every split second and a friction of a mi minute, etc. until when becoming advanced in age, say about 
50, 60, 70, the bodily appearance become obviously changed, showing signs of deterioration, showing signs of decay, with the appearance of gray hair, wrinkle, etc. <clears throat> Withering with age, he or she can easily be afflicted with a disease at one time or other. Immune system low. And after serious derangement of his or her health, he reached his deathbed and ultimately pathway. So it becomes evident that hour by hour, as, as time goes on, we all are carried closer to aging, sickness and death. An example, a group of cattle slaughterers carry away an ox to be killed, every step taken by that ox brought him nearer to the threshold of death. You see, the ox knew of the coming disaster and imminent death, and as such, that ox was struggling to escape from the hands of the butcher. Only one or two ox can, can escape, or the ox sex cannot escape. <clears throat> so the gelder slaughterer were, however, pulling it hard and dragging the poor animal with force. The ox had no way out but to submit to this ill treatment against his own will. So it was indeed a pitiable sight. Just like that ox, which was carried away by the slaughterers to the slaughterhouse, we all beings are being carried away by our Nama and Rupa without any break, even for a second, to make us suffer from aging, sickness, and death. Now you are watching your Nama Rupa continuously and closely, you may know. So having seen all beings drifting to us disaster, Magruna, great compassion, had arisen in the fully enlightened Buddha. So what the Lord Buddha had perceived was Beings are fast approaching aging, sickness, and death at every moment of an arising. So, which occurs incessantly with great speed, much faster than a split second or a flash of lightning. So this knowledge brought forth a feeling of boundless compassion, Magruna, in our Lord Buddha. Now to understand this, you are practicing very seriously how the Namarupa are functioning. You are contemplating Satipatthana meditation the whole day, the whole night, and you can fully appreciate that 
this Namarupa are gradually approaching aging, sickness, and death at every moment. If you perceive your mind that constant, constantly changes. In the beginning, your concentration not very complete, not very strong. But when Medidida are contemplating and noting according to the teaching of the instruction, when they reach the stage of Binganyana, the knowledge of dissolution, they will find it very obvious. The object that is noted and the knowing mind dissolve part by part continuously. It is something like, like each bed threaded with others on the string, falling down one after another in great speed. Every time dissolution takes place, it carries us nearer to aging, sickness, and death. So Madhideda who have reached Binganyana, the knowledge of the solution, may agree with your inside knowledge that it is so happening. But if we not reach this stage, gradually you will understand when you reach that jnana. But, but ordinary people can imagine this state of phenomena within a second or a minute or an hour or a day or a month or a year. Roughly speaking, the person will clearly perceive himself as coming a bit closer to aging, sickness, and death if he or she could reflect upon his or her own self year to year. Signs of withering in age followed by sickness and death can be visualized. Generally, most people die when they reach the age of 70 or 80 plus or 90. Both rich and poor, as well as dictator, powerful rulers and heroes, come to a road end in the path of life. That is, death between the age of 70 or 80 or little beyond that age. So Nama and Rupa, psychophysical phenomena in our own body are carrying, away, carrying us away to aging, sickness and death. So Masi Sierra has this aphorism. Men are impermanent. They are driven to aging, sickness, and death. This is from the Pali text. Upane di loko adu wo. Adu wo. Men are impermanent. We all are driven, beings are driven away to aging, sickness, and death. So if this aphorism is reflected upon, the nature of nature, impermanence become obvious, maranosity, recollections of death, we also become developed. 
So in every existence, all beings have to go through the process of inevitable aging, sickness, and death. It is the rocky and dangerous path we are walking along. How pitiable we are. We can be very well imagine this awful state. It is not surprising that Magruna, great compassion, had uh, arisen in fully enlightened Buddha to us all beings. And also every day we develop Mitta Bhavana, Sabi Sata, Awira Hondu, Abhya Bija Hondu, Andiga Hondu, Sukhi Adana, Priyarandu, Sabi Sata, Dokha Mojandu. Dokha Mojandu is for Kuruna Bhavana. So every day, every night we do radiate Kuruna Bhavana. So all beings are suffering, so we do, we do practice Guru Navavana, Sabbe Sata Dukkha Mojandu, may they be free from suffering. So Buddha himself had done this Guru Nabhavana and also uh, at, at night we have to develop Guru Nabhavana seriously. So you have to imagine all beings are subjected to aging, sickness and death to which they are being conveyed that's really impermanent May all suffering beings be liberated from this misery. Sabi Sata Dukkha Mojandu. May all these suffering beings be liberated from this misery. So this, the manner of developing Guru Nabhavana in this way is of a very high standard. It is similar to the great compassion radiated upon mankind by our Lord Buddha. So among people in general, a great many of them are in misery for having suffered loss of their business or for loss of destruction of their properties or for being separated from their beloved one. So beings are suffering a lot. So we have to develop Guru Nabhavana towards such people in misery. May all beings who are suffering misery in one way or the other be liberated from such misery. And then Buddha had great compassion towards beings because all beings have no one to look after them and nothing to depend upon. Having perceived in this way, great compassion of Magruna had occurred in the hearts of the Buddha. Atta no logo anabisaro. Atta no logo anabisaro. All beings have no one to protect or look after them 
and no one to rely upon. Being God of Yah was not able to grasp the meaning of this statement. All beings have no one to protect or look after them and no one to rely upon. King Korivya did not understand. So King Korivya asked Venerable Ratapala, O oh, Venerable Ratapala, you see our country is very strong. Our country have many armed forces, strong forces to defend and protect us. These strong army are to be relied upon. And then what is the intention conveyed in the, this statement? Have no one to protect and rely upon. King Korovia asks this question. Then Venerable Ratabala queried, O King Korovia, don't you ever have any affliction? Yes, Bandi. If that afflicted disease ill treat you cruelly, how would you feel? To this question, King Korovia replied, When this disease becomes very serious and ill treats me, I will suffer gravely to the point of near death. There had been occasion when my relatives in close proximity of my sick bed wept bitterly, even shedding tears, thinking that I was about to die. They cry a lot. Having heard this reply for the purpose of verification, another question was put. King Korovia, when this disease has caused you terrible pain and suffering, could you share your disease with your relatives and friends? Will you be able to share your suffering? If you ask them to give you relief? When Ratabala asks, to this Queen, uh, King Korovia gave his reply. Dante, it is impossible to share my disease. Neither can they take share in, in my disease. I alone have to suffer severely and endure my pain with all the ill power at my command. And Venerable Ratabala then explained exactly King Gorbia. Oda has therefore preached that just as there is no one who can give protection and on whom reliance can be made in times of extreme distress such as this, we all living beings also have no one to protect us and in whom refuge can be sought. So despite the presence of our parents and relatives who are uh, delivering utmost assistance and giving 
full protection, they cannot possibly prevent the dear ones from getting old, sick, and suffering death. No one is capable of looking after another to keep him or her to keep him or her away, always young and vigorous. When the time comes, we are sure to get old. This nature of aging cannot be shared. In case aging can be shared by distributing parts and parcel to it to other family members, the person would have become always youthful and energetic. So if it can be done that way, it would be very good, but it is impossible. Though preventive measure in regard to health can be taken by appropriate drugs and medicine, Total prevention against disease is impossible. If really serious or malignant disease is afflicted, no perfect cure can be done. Suffering from disease can neither be shared in piecemeal if disease if uh, it is within the bounds of possibility to share the suffering it will be very nice but it is impossible so no one can possibly prevent death aging Sickness and death cannot be prevented by anyone from occurring. No one can also prevent a person from going down to the four woeful states to which he is destined after his dis uh, death. He will be reborn due to his or her good, wholesome or unwholesome karma. Realizing this fate of all living beings, Buddha radiated his immense compassion, Magruna, on all beings. So Masi Sierra have this aphorism without a protector and without anything to rely upon how fever and weary we are. So in the entire universe, there's no one who can save a person to get liberated from the suffering of aging, sickness and death and to escape from going down to the four woeful states or to get emancipated from the misery of samsara. So how Buddha save us? Buddha save all mankind is by way of preaching, by way of laying down the method to practice, to get liberated from the the rounds of suffering and misery. So it is something like prescribing and administering medicine by a physician to a patient under treatment. Just as the sick who complies with the advice and instruction given by the doctor has recovered from sickness, 
a person who obeys and complies with the instruction of the Buddha and practice according to his preaching will be liberated from the misery of uh, apaya for woeful states and sansara suffering. And Bora is founded to Mehi Kecha Mataban, Eka Taro Tatagata, Padi Pana Bamokandi, Jaino Mara Bandana. Bora said, You must carry out by yourself, relating to the practice of Sila Samadhi and Pinya, morality, concentration, and wisdom. Which need to be exercised with diligence and right effort. And you must be carried out by yourself. We, the Buddha, can only preach the right method of practice to be exercised. By contemplating both Samatha meditation and Vipassana meditation, the meditators who practice according to my teaching will be liberated from the bonds of Mara mental defilements. So Buddha is bonded and encouraged his disciple. So that means that those meditators who work out their own salvation with right effort and diligence as taught by the Buddha will be free from the, the fetters of, of Kilesa mental defilements. If no practice is exercised according to his teaching, there will be no escape. So the right method can only be known and heard only when the Buddhas appear in this universe. Outside the realms of the Buddha teaching, there can be no emancipation from misery since no right method is known and understood to be practiced. So in the absence of the right method of exercise, and in, as much as there is no one on whom reliance can be made, beings are falling and whirling rounds and rounds in samsara and floating and drifting in the whirlpool of endless existence. And therefore, they are suffering in misery. So this state of behavior condition being seen by the Buddha and the great compassion for all beings had awakened in the fully enlightened Buddha. So just as Buddha had his compassion, also, we have to dwell our mind on all beings who have no one to rely upon as a protector. And then we have to develop Guru Nabhavana. So every day, every night. Sabi Sata Dukkha Mojandu. All beings are suffering in misery in this samsara existence. They have no, they have, they, they have no one to protect them from becoming aging, sickness, and death. May all these suffering beings be liberated from misery. 
So when you radiate Guru Nabhavana, when you practice Guru Nabhavana, Dokha Mojandu, you need to practice compassion, Guru Nabhavana, in this way. And Bodha had a great compassion to all beings. And how? Asakon Loko Sabambhaya Gamaniyam. All beings have no personal properties of their own. It is to say that beings have no personal belongings or properties of their own. As is universally accepted, everyone has his own properties. The only difference is the magnitude of the properties or wealth, which may be plenty or little. At least they owe something with their own status. For so long as destructions or loss has not yet been met, the property will continue to remain in their hands. However, how all accomplishment or properties meet with destruction in the end. All accomplishment in connection with worldly matters, such as property and wealth, will eventually be reduced to nothing. So this is quite true. Sickness we finally overcome, good health. We need to understand we have good health, but finally sickness we overcome. Youthfulness ends in old age. or sounds and vigorous body grows old in the end. Though a person is fully accomplished with wealth, honor, or fame, nothing can be taken along with him or her on his or her death. Even endowment with a large number of retinue of friends in whose company one once lived and enjoyed, we eventually be deprived of. To live is to die in the end. Moreover, everything that is good and pleasurable from the mundane point of view will in the end be be deprived of. This can be clearly known from the life history of the very famous king, King Asoka from India. So, Masi Sierra, with this aphorism, there is no personal private properties. All things have to be abandoned eventually. And Buddha has great compassion to all to us all beings, reflecting in this way. Uno loco addictor nadaso. Beings are not fully provided with everything. There is no contentment. There is no satisfaction with what they possess. 
It is also perfectly true and correct. The person tried to possess things in which he or she is originally lacking. Imagine at first that he or she will remain contented with what is available, sufficient enough for his or her present need to live on. However, when things are obtained, as he saw her dream, he or she may still crave for more. The one who is earning 100, we hope to get 200. The one who gets 200 may desire to receive 400 and so on. His or her thirst for getting more and more cannot be quenched. So that is the reason why uh, in this country many rich people are worrying and making their efforts to get richer and richer. So why does seeking wealth with their own insatiable desire or greed, they have to die without contentment? For example, any amount of rainwater and waters from rivers may flow into the vast expanse of the ocean, and yet the mighty ocean never gets flooded. So another instance may be cited. Any amount of inflammable material may be poured into a burning heap of fire, yet it may be, it will be consumed in no time. So every time inflammable material is put in, fire burns all the more. In the same way, beings are never satiated. This greed and discontentment is caused by the influence of tanna craving. As impulsed by tanna craving, beings go on striving to earn for their living. Accordingly, they will become slaves to Tanna craving. So Buddha saw these beings who are uh, ridden with Tanna and toiling for their livelihood had great compassion on them. For Arahans, Arahan have totally eradicated all kinds of Tana and he has been fully emancipated from the bonds of Tana craving. So compassion which had arisen in our Lord Buddha was simply because he found and realized that ordinary warlings for not having been free from craving, uh, undergoing great misery as slaves of the Tanna. So when you develop Guru Nabhavana, you have to visualize the suffering beings. These beings are in misery and they were, they are discontented for not having able to fulfill their desire. So they become slaves of Tanna. So visualize 
sabi sada doka mojandu me all these me all these suffering beings who are in misery and who are discontented discontented for not for not being able to fulfill their desire may they be free from Slavish condition caused by dana, may they be liberated from suffering. So Buddha saw all beings are suffering. Misery are lying awake for the unavoidable aging, sickness, and death. That we take hold of them, and when <coughs> uh, uh, like Buddha, we have to, to, to develop Karuna Bhavana, wishing these uh, suffering beings escape from all such kinds of misery. Doka uh, Mojandu, when you develop Guru Nabhavana, you need to visualize the suffering beings uh, who have these, uh, these various kinds of suffering be liberated from misery. So we have to stop our discourse for today by practicing Vipassana meditation by developing Mitta Bhavana, Guru Nabhavana, etc. by noting, rising, falling, sitting, touching, seeing, hearing, and continuously and meticulously, may all yogis be liberated from all suffering, may all yogis realize the real peace in the very near future.